So let's look at what we're going to do when we first start lead core fishing. The first thing you're going to want to do is basically kind of randomly put out some line. And you want to make sure then that the bait is close to the bottom. So what you've got to do is actually see that bait start to hit the bottom. If it isn't hitting bottom, let out some more line. Maybe let out another 20 feet, another 20 feet, until finally it starts to tick bottom. And then you're going to reel up a little line and lift it up. Now this is where a line counter really comes in handy because oftentimes that's not an even number of colors of lead. You know, it might not be two colors, three colors. Colors. It might be 142 feet. So the good thing is, is once you figure that out one time, if you've got a line counter, you can immediately put back out 142 feet. Now you're right back down in that fish zone. All right, so let's take a look at some of the components of this system that let us run this lead core. First of all, you don't connect lead core right to your lure. You're going to want some kind of a leader. Now in this case, we've still got some of the old grass and brush and things down there. So you can get debris on your lure. You want to use a no stretch leader in that situation because then you can watch that lure vibrate and know when you pick up some junk. I used about a 15 foot uh, no stretch leader of fire line. To that then, we're gonna have our lead core. Now the lead core is gonna be 18 pound test lead core. That's a real good diving lead core. It gets your bait down quickly, but yet it's thick enough so that when you pick up and slow down on your speeds, it will actually change what depth that that crankbait is actually running. Now, you're gonna want a fairly flexible rod. We're running two different rods in this case. We're running a 10 foot rod far out to the side, and then we're running a shorter eight and a half foot rod inside, but all of them have a very flexible tip on them so that when that fish hits in this no stretch situation, you got a little shock absorption. Now many times to get your bait down to the right depth, you're gonna have to let out a lot of line, 150 feet, 180 feet. Well, Jim has come up with a method with a, a, a lead ball that you add to this lead core that really helps with that. I'm gonna let him describe that. So when we're cranking really deep, I like to use what I call a, a heavy ball. And what that is, it's an eight ounce lead weight over the top of this red offshore release. This release is very important. It's a release that has a pin in it. And to place it on the line, you put that lead core deep in that clip and the pin goes over the top and that'll keep it on your line. I like to use this heavy ball system anytime I'm running lead core back 150 feet or more. If we were to take our four lead lines and put them back 200 feet, get those lures wobbling back there, maybe we get a fish on, maybe we get a little bit of bottom debris, all that stuff's gonna come together and we're probably gonna have a big knotted up mess. So what I like to do is take this heavy ball and put it on my front line, clip it on the line, and then that gives me a nice spread between my two lines. I got my one rod way out the back and I got my other rod shorter and in front of it. So the two things are, you get the nice spread between your lines and it's very quick to deploy. You drop this thing down, plunk, it's gone, you're fishing fast. Right here, Jim. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing up my other line, and this one went down. That looks good. This is on the ball. The heavy ball. Goodness gracious. Great balls of fire. Nice and steady. The beer's ready for the ball. I'm at 60, so the ball's 10 more here. Here, there you go. Here comes the ball. Let's I'll get that ball. I better get the net for this one. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I like when you think you should get the net. You know, he feels about eight ounces lighter than he did, Jim. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep him coming nice and steady. He's a good fish. Definitely a good fish. Here comes 20, Jim. Leader should be right here. Right. Here he comes. Here he comes, oh, Jim. Oh, it's a nice one, Keith. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Look at this tank. Yo. Beer? <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> that thing has been eating the schmelz. <laughs> Thing's just a brick. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I mean, he is just a great fish. God, that, that, that ball is cool because it keeps it away from that other line and yep. didn't have to even worry about that. So, very nice. Nice system here. There. <laughs> I know you like them, but well, don't a, bite them. Let's give them a little <laughs> we don't need the next bite that way. All right. Here we go. I think he's gonna go here. Beautiful. Hot topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. We're in an 18 foot deep V boat right now. 
and those boats have notoriously been a little bit tough to get up on plane. If you're trying to fight bigger waves with a boat like that, you need to have a lot of power and lower end torque. Enter Mercury's new four stroke. This is the 150 four stroke. They came out with it a couple years ago and it was built just for these types of boats. It was built for the deep V boats, the pontoon boats, anything that's got a load to it, something that's pretty heavy. They actually designed the motor to have more low end torque than anything else in its class. But yet they didn't give up speed. Top end speed's been pretty phenomenal with this motor. And they worked on the fuel economy. The fuel economy for this motor is excellent also. But probably what stands out the most is out of this engine, this being a fork stroke engine, it's the lightest engine in its class. But more, more than anything else, the engine has been bulletproof the last two years. So if you're looking at that type of a boat, 18, 19 feet deep Vs, a big pontoon, anything along those lines, this is absolutely the motor of choice.